Aaron Beatty. Um, I'm a graduate student in the um, English department at uh, UC Berkeley. Um, I'm currently working in the Mark Twain project uh, at the Bancroft Library, um, and I've been here for been here for about now eight years. So I've seen a lot of um, kind of rise and, and and ebb and flow of student protest and uh, uh, over over um, privatization and public education and fee hikes and so forth. I'm in the Department of English, uh, as I said, and here we have a picture of um, James Hart, who was then the, the chairman of the department. Um, and he's standing next to, you know, he's standing next to this, this shelf of the shelves testifying to the current productivity of members of the department. It's, it's this demonstration, like, look at what we've produced. Look at all of this incredible knowledge that's being produced and very, you know, knowledge as a, as a kind of value being returned. And it's almost like, he, you know, he's, he's showing us his, his bushel of wheat, you know, like, look at, look at the produce of my department. Um, and, and in a lot of ways, that's, that's sort of the simplest way of representing what a university does, of, of, you know, just showing, like, here we have these books that contain knowledge within them. But of course, it's a lot more complicated than that. And uh, facing that, we have this picture of, of the Mark Twain collection, which I, I'm, I'm working there now. And I'm immediately struck at how hard they're working to produce exactly the same tableau. Their, their work to show, like, look at what we're, look at this, this scholarly product that's being produced, um, exactly as, as James Hart is doing. Um, but but what's, what I think is funny about this photograph is it's an extremely staged photograph. Um, and it's a misleadingly staged photograph because these, these piles of letters, um, they should be cataloged away in files. They should be in plastic sheaths. They should be protected from the air. They should be protected from being knocked over. They, there's no usefulness to piling them up this way. There's also a definite kind of danger in piling them up this way. So whereas a shelf is, it's perfectly normal to put books on a shelf. That makes perfect sense. Um, it doesn't make sense to, to sort of put them here as a mass unless you're trying to show that this is an archive as a container of, of, of this kind of value. Um, but, you know, they're, they're staging the work that they're doing for a camera to, 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 to make that kind of claim. Um, so after I was looking at looking at those two and kind of thinking of the the comparison between them, I got interested in in all the other in the other representations of libraries and and how how this kind of scholarly product is 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 made visible. Um, and this one I think is a University Library Santa Cruz. It, it's showing a massive building. It's showing a, a, a massive lot of books that are that are being kept there. It kind of looks like a warehouse. It kind of looks like the you know the industrial containing uh, infrastructure that that we see in other parts of of this book, where we're actually seeing agricultural product or other products. You know, you have this librarian here, sort of showing us his his work, showing us his his warehouse of knowledge, um, and the the emphasis is on the warehouse of knowledge, and it's you don't see anyone using this knowledge. I don't think there's anyone, I don't think there's another figure visible, only the person who takes care of it, but doesn't really use it as such. It's his job to take care of it. And the third photo in that kind of sequence, but this is a radically different way of representing books. These books are pushed up to be staged for us, for the, for the viewers, and this, you know, might be an actual shelf, but, but this is symbolically representative of books, rather than being demonstrative of a vast expanse of books. We're just, we need a couple books so that we know it's a library, so grab a couple books and put them up here. And then the rest of the photo is very much away from the books. Rather than being contained in the stacks and contained in the architecture, it, it opens out. It opens out into a window into um, the outdoors. And then these students, you know, they're not in a reading room. They're not in a sanctioned place for reading. They're actually in a kind of terrible place for reading. They're in this stairwell. Um, and they seem to be having a very spontaneous conversation, a very outside the dictates of where one reads, where one learns, where one studies. Who knows what they're talking about? But, but you have to wonder. They could be talking about something that has nothing to do with their classrooms or something. So there's a nice kind of range of placing students in relationship to books and libraries and, and where those sites of, of learning take place that indicates a certain kind of 
either flexibility or, or maybe ambiguity about where what the students role is in this industrial production of knowledge you know is, is is the student the product is the student part of the production process is the student the customer um, you know the, the the ways the students are placed in space I think raises a lot of those questions really interestingly and, and those are questions we still we're still sort of talking about inviting about and being confused about